Okay, so uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, good afternoon uh, to uh, everybody. Um, uh, so probably uh, most of you have known me uh, before. Uh, I'm Dahi uh, uh, from uh, EDEC. So we are doing uh, the Microsoft Teams uh, classroom uh, learning uh, workshop uh, for today with uh, people from um, uh, Fedelist, which is a uh, Microsoft um, uh, what, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember what, what, what kind, what term do you use? Uh, Microsoft sort of, you know, coach or guy, uh, isn't it? Uh, okay. Yeah, this is a team coach pro, uh, team coach program. So uh, Fedelist serve as a mentor. Uh, at the same time, Fedelist is actually a global training partner of Microsoft. <laughs> The global training partner for Microsoft. Okay, so uh, let's uh, continue with the um, um, workshop that we have uh, today. So uh, if you see um, the, the slide that I used uh, today, is a little bit different. It's uh, using Sway. So this is one of uh, the Microsoft's uh, product that we have access to with our Office 365 uh, account. Uh, we'll uh, look at uh, the the features in Sway a little bit later, so probably uh, near near um, like halfway or towards the end. Uh, but I, I actually have been using uh, Sway uh, for presentations um, uh, for quite some time now. Um, and today we are going to look at uh, Microsoft Teams uh, classroom learning uh, for educators. So most of us here will be. Um, lecturers uh, in UM, so there are also a few technical people and also people from uh, Medellis. Uh, and I think uh, people from Microsoft might, might uh, people from Microsoft might also be dropping in um, to see how uh, we are doing. Okay, so so this is the schedule that um, uh, we created for uh, today's session. So it's going to be uh, about two and a half hours, so, so that is the uh, Planned anyway. Uh, hopefully, um, with engagement, maybe we can start, uh, or we can, if we get the uh, people following properly, then probably we can uh, end a little bit further, uh, faster. Uh, but we were, we are hoping to um, make full use of the whole uh, two and a half hours uh, that we have uh, uh, today, and even if we can actually extend that to five o'clock. All right, so. Uh, First, um, uh, working with uh, educators, so um, I would suggest, uh, I would guess that most of you have known about, about the uh, Office subscriber account that uh, we have uh, in the university. Uh, and uh, on one of the uh, ways that we can manage and also ways that we can uh, maximize the use of the Office 365 account, is by using it uh, for our teaching. So I'm going to um, look at how we uh, do uh, teams uh, for classes, okay. and also um, uh, working with uh, students uh, to manage our conversation in teams. Uh, we are going to also look at teams meetings. So how do we do uh, online teaching using teams and the features that's available in uh, teams, and also use uh, Sway uh, the uh, the presentation or the storytelling app and also uh, look at how we can uh, create assignments and also give feedback to the students using the class uh, teams. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, introduce you to uh, the Teams spaces. So uh, what we uh, wanted to do today is if you have not created a class in your Microsoft Teams, uh, we, are, we are going to uh, try that out today. So classes can be created um, by ourselves. Uh, so anybody who wants to use um, the uh, facilities in Teams uh, to do their classes, we can do it. But especially when we are trying to uh, do uh, online teaching, that means uh, online meeting with our students, to store files and also uh, 
to create uh, supplementary team application. So there will be uh, quite a number of uh, useful applications that I, I foresee will be useful uh, for the teams. And uh, looking through the um, the way that the platform is set, set up, uh, we can also do uh, one exciting thing, which is uh, create a SharePoint site or uh, some sort of a mini website for our course. I think I think that is something that I, uh, I'm going to uh, try myself. Uh, it looks uh, really, really promising because uh, creating a website for the uh, class, especially with uh, visual information uh, and also uh, very easy to use layout, I think that will be uh, something of a bonus that we can offer to uh, our students and also to uh, our kids. Um, in Teams, uh, once you create a class, uh, then uh, you will be uh, given a default channel, so a general channel, uh, but then um, you can add more channels to uh, your team. So I'm going to share uh, with you uh, how uh, that will work uh, in the demo a little bit later. Uh, the channels can be arranged um, uh, around topics or weeks or groups. So that is, uh, I think, uh, what you uh, can uh, create. So this is just basic ideas, topics, weeks and groups. And that is normally what we do in our spectrum anyway. Uh, and then um, for every team, uh, the default general channel will come with uh, assignments and grades. So uh, the tag will be automatically created in the class channel and then uh, we're going to look at how we can utilize uh, the, the assignments and grades in there. Um, for membership of the chat of the teams, so uh, members can be added manually by uh, the, the educators or uh, you can also create a team code where the students can uh, enroll themselves. Of course, they need to log in uh, with their Siswa365 um.edu.my uh, uh, account. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, if, uh, for example, you have guest lecturers, so some uh, professional courses or, uh, or any other courses that uh, would like to invite people from industry, for example, or uh, people who uh, are experts in, in something, and uh, these people are not affiliated with the university, you can also get these uh, guest lecturers uh, to join the, the course and also the online meeting. So the way that um, the, the groups and also the, the teams that's uh, offered in the class is actually quite useful especially when you wanted to do uh, teaching and it uh, enables you to also join uh, or uh, allow uh, the outside people can uh, to be part of the class that you are teaching okay so um, i think uh, one uh, question that i would uh, ask uh, to um, uh, everyone is have you um, okay teams at immediately to your computers okay so uh, once you created uh, your office subscriber account you can actually download uh, teams uh, but at the same time you can download also teams to for example your phones or your your tablets so and we're going to look at that uh, a little bit later okay so let's go on to the demo of uh, creating a class in uh, microsoft teams and also uh, looking at uh, how uh, you then create uh, the classes and also uh, the adding the members uh, to the class. Okay, so uh, let me share with you a different screen right now. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, guide you through the creation of uh, teams for your class. Uh, as an example, so this is actually a class team that, uh, that I have created for my class. So this is uh, the course code BIV2001. So it can be uh, whatever teams that uh, you have in your uh, uh, list of courses. So maybe you wanted to try with one uh, course first, or you can, if you are feeling quite uh, 
confident you can uh, continue with um, uh, the old class that you have. So uh, to create or uh, to create uh, a team for your class, what you do is you click on this uh, icon at the bottom to join or create a team. So by clicking on this uh, item, you will be given uh, uh, these two options. Okay, so uh, don't worry about this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, teams. So this is actually an open team that uh, was created by uh, UM staff. So you can actually uh, ask to join any of the, uh, the groups. But we are going to focus on this uh, great team. Uh, as an educator, you can create a team and you will be given uh, an option of four different team types. Okay. Um, so for classes, uh, and this is only for classes, if you wanted to do assessment with the students, the class team is the one that you wanted to uh, choose. Okay. So other than that, uh, it will be missing one item, which is the uh, assignments and grades. Okay. So if you want to do class teams, uh, these two things, uh, uh, which is assignments and grades, you need to click on uh, classes. But for, at the same time, you can actually create uh, teams for uh, PLC or professional learning uh, community. So that is uh, for educator working group. So that is any type of um, uh, uh, learning community that you may have. Okay. Uh, you can also have a staff team. So for example, you are a, a dean uh, at a faculty and you want to manage uh, the filing and also uh, your uh, staff in your school or in your department. For example, if you are head of the department, then you can create a staff team. Uh, and other people, for example, uh, if you are a member of a club, a student is a member of a club, can also create a uh, team uh, with the, the, classify, the, the classification as other teams. So it can be clubs, study groups, or any uh, other uh, activities. So let's focus on the class. Okay, so click on the class. So let's name this um, class. So let's uh, name a class that I'm going to be teaching to uh, next semester. So that then I don't have to create it another one. Create another one. So let's say this is um, 304. So that is uh, construction safety. So don't worry uh, about um, the name because you can actually still uh, change uh, or update the name uh, later. So, so this is um, okay. when you click on next. So the team will be created, and uh, at this point you can uh, straight away add student or a fellow teacher. Okay, so a fellow educator. So, for example, you are teaching as a group. So, you have another person who is going to teach with you. So, what you do is just uh, just type their name. So, anybody from uh, our faculty, uh, so or from our university, will appear. So, let me think of a name. So, let's say um, this is um, Dr. Ao Yong. Okay, so uh, then I'm going to add him as a member of the. Uh, teaching group so student so i can just type any name uh, student name but uh, at this moment i'm not going to do that because i what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the students to join using team code so i if i have uh, 10 student then uh, probably also, uh, of course i can just search for those 10 names but if i have 100 students or 200 students, then it will not make sense for me to spend time to actually look for the uh, students and also type and get them uh, one by one. So I'm going to close this off. But at the same time, I'm already given uh, this uh, teams. Okay, so um, apart from that, uh, creating uh, and joining teams, uh, you can also do a little bit more on your uh, Teams uh, page. Okay, so uh, what you see here now, so this is uh, one of the layout uh, for the teams. So this is um, the uh, uh, you have a you have a frame at the left on the left, and then you you'll be uh, given access to uh, the teams. But you can uh, at the same time switch uh, views. So if you 
uh, would rather have a grid like structure okay with uh, a dark background okay so what you do is you just um, enable those and so that is uh, another layout that you would uh, be able to use and in this uh, layout uh, the joining or creating team is actually uh, placed on top uh, on the top uh, right hand side and to switch back to a view that you uh, you might like then you can actually go here and do that so um, i'm going to stick with uh, uh, the the list um, uh, theme and that's for a, a simple reason that i am actually a member of quite a lot of teams so this allows me to actually um, uh, be uh, more efficient in, in finding uh, the team that I'm a member of and I wanted to um, um, go to. Okay, so so that is the uh, team that I just created. Actually, when, when you created a team, it will appear at the bottom. What you can do is you can actually move it, just scroll it up and move it to the top. Okay, where was it just now? Okay, so that's one. So, so let's say I'm going to put it uh, amongst my classes. Okay, so then, so this will be my teams. Okay, and what you can also do with uh, the teams now, so I, I can go to uh, edit team. Okay, uh, if I wanted to change the name, so for example, construction safety and risk management. Uh, edit the names okay uh, you can change the uh, form of the team so uh, post secondary so I can put in so this is actually uh, engineering uh, social science maybe or science okay and I can then choose the icon for the team so uh, health and safety, I would say that would be, so can I get a picture of a helmet here? Uh, no helmet, so, yeah, so that could look, that looks um, good for a uh, health and safety or construction safety uh, course. Okay, so when I save the changes, now uh, my uh, group or my class the icon. So uh, remember, I asked, I, I told you that we are going to have two uh, additional things in being that that is by default uh, for class creation. You have assignments and you are going to have grades. Okay, so those are the two things that um, we are going to explore that a little bit later. So um, uh, we've created the uh, assignment. Oh, sorry, we've created the um, the teams. So now, how do you add students? into the members okay remember uh, remember just now i did not uh, add any uh, student members okay uh, and that is because um, my class will, uh, uh, will normally have around 30 to 40 students so uh, it's better for them to actually enroll them into my class and that would get them engaged with the teams app very very quickly so that, that means um, I only give them uh, the information that uh, they need, then they would need to actually figure it out. And since there are 40 of them, once one person figure out how to do it, then that one person can actually uh, help on the others. And that is normally how I, I design uh, my, my teaching anyway. So get one person to know, and then they will be able to teach the others. So uh, when uh, to add members or to uh, allow students to add themselves into the team, what you do is you go to manage teams, okay, and it will get you to this uh, page. So this is the, and then it will tell you what are the members, um, what channels do you have. So of course, uh, at this point, I don't have any channels. Uh, if you look at the teams that I have uh, on top, uh, the BIV, I have uh, not, uh, one channel for that. So that is one topic. So I base my, my team on the topic. And what we wanted to do now is we actually wanted to look at the uh, settings for the team codes, okay, this one. And team codes allow you to uh, generate uh, a code so that then 
uh, people inside your organizations, that means your students or your uh, peers, uh, to be able to join the team directly without uh, having you to approve them. Okay, so what you do is you just click on generate. Okay, and it will show you this um, random uh, numbers and alphabets. You can actually uh, make it full screen like that. So if, for example, uh, you uh, are showing this to your class uh, in front of the class, uh, but of course this uh, or in, in during your uh, online uh, teaching uh, session, so you can show this, so then they can uh, go and uh, open uh, the thing. Okay, so the students can also actually. Uh, uh, read the uh, instruction uh, at the bottom of the of the screen, which is uh, look for the join team code card. Okay, and where do the students uh, enter the, the team code? Okay, so that uh, we copy this first. So in your uh, join or create a team. Okay, so what the students will need to do is click on join or create a team and what they do is, is they enter the code there. So once uh, the student enters the code, then uh, he or she will be, uh, be able to join uh, the class uh, right away. So without you having to uh, import them into the uh, uh, class. So that is uh, how you get your students uh, create a uh, class, uh, sorry, to, to join the class that you have created. Okay, so so uh, what I wanted to do, I want what I want you to do now is if you have not created or uh, 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 yeah created a class team yet, uh, I'm going to give you uh, about uh, ten minutes uh, to do that. Hopefully, uh, ten minutes is uh, not too short. So what I want you to do is I want you to uh, open uh, your Microsoft Teams. Okay, you can either open it in the browser or open it in the app. Okay, I would suggest that you open it the uh, in, in the app. So what you do is just you just go to your um, uh, uh, Windows, start menu, and find uh, Teams. Or you can click on uh, the search button in your window and then uh, find Teams. Otherwise, what you can do is you go into your browser and log in with the, using your Office 365 account to Teams, okay? So I'm going to give you 10 minutes uh, to uh, do that. So uh, we are, and I'm, I will be uh, available if you have any questions uh, at this point, uh, but I'm going to give you this 10 minutes to uh, create your Teams and play around with uh, the settings in there, okay? And for good measure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create or start a timer so that then you can keep to uh, the time. Okay, so uh, you can start now. You can uh, just turn on your mic and ask or uh, if you would rather to type your question, you can type your question. I will be monitoring the... Uh, what do you call it? The, the chat in uh, the Teams page. Okay, so I have a question here uh, by Dr. Uh, Elsa. So, how do you make the team to have a back, black background? Okay, what uh, I do, so let me share my screen. 
Okay. So what I do is I go to the teams um, and go to um, uh, sorry, ah uh, yeah. Uh, Oh, no, no, this one. Okay, here in the in the more option uh, part in the uh, next to join and create teams. Okay, uh, what you do is click on switch view, and so you can choose the theme to be dark. Okay, so the dark theme will give you a uh, dark background, and um, a high contrast theme will give you a high contrast. Uh, but this is only uh, people with. Um, uh, um, well, uh, probably colorblind people would need to have uh, to use this, but normal people, if you want to, to have a dark theme, so you can just choose that. So once you uh, close that, automatically you will have a uh, dark theme. But um, it's not really my my thing. I'm more of a, a very uh, light um, color um, uh, background anyway. So so that is how uh, I. I think Doctor, so. yep. you also can share about the layout, the grid and the list. The layout okay. down there. Yep. Hmm. What was it? What was it just now, Ryan? I mean the layout. The layout. Uh okay. hmm. just now uh same settings mm -hmm. be just below the background. There should be a layout option. There's a grid and this. Yes. Oh, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I've, I've, mm. I've, uh, I've already uh, mentioned that. Okay. Okay. that uh, um, let me explain this. So, this is whether uh, you want to have a grid um, layout or uh, a list layout. So, uh, the one that uh, I prefer is actually the list layout because I have too many teams. But if you uh, don't have too many teams, uh, a grid layout is actually much uh, more visually appealing. Um, so I, I think that is uh, what I think uh, anyway. So if you have, for example, only uh, two lines uh, uh, or two lines, yeah, from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, so about uh, 10 to 14 uh, groups uh, or teams, then uh, a grid layout might, is, is much, much nicer uh, looking than uh, a list layout. But for me, uh, since I have uh, quite a number of uh, teams, uh, I prefer the list layout. Okay, uh, more questions? Oops, this one. Okay, so any more question? So, uh, some some I mean, some some uh, if you create team as a class, can it be changed to another team? Okay, you cannot. So, uh, please be clear before you you create your uh, teams. What kind of teams are you uh, creating so that then uh, you'll be able to uh, use uh, the teams uh, properly? Okay, we have four minutes, so uh, please play around. If anybody wants to like, show off their their class teams, uh, just uh, share the screen, and so that then we can uh, see uh, what your what your class is. Uh, even it's just a, a, a very simple, or uh, you just created and just wanted to um, showcase uh, uh, your course. Because of course uh, you uh, we will not be able to join your team unless you give us the 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 join code okay and uh, another thing about the join code uh, you can actually change uh, the join code to, to uh, randomize okay uh, so what you do is um, let me share the screen so that then you see how uh, that is done let's go back to uh, 
the Microsoft Teams window. Oops, suddenly my monitor went blank. Okay. Okay. So um, this class uh, go to uh, manage team. So for example, uh, you have already uh, created this um, team code. And you don't want any other people to join with the, um, the same code, or you don't want anybody else to join because uh, you, uh, all the, the students are already there. Uh, what you do is you just click on reset, and the system will automatically change uh, the, the team code. So if anybody else tried using the same old code, they will not be able to join uh, your team. Yeah, so that is uh, more of a, like a security measure for uh, your class or your, yeah, or your class. Any more questions or anybody who wants to share their uh, class teams? So we have about two minutes to go. Okay, so um, there's a question uh, by uh, Dr. Elsa who cannot turn back to the normal view. Oh no, what happened, Dr. Elsa? Uh, Dr. Elsa, uh, can you open your? Ah, so it's set already. Okay, very good. Um, okay, uh, Dr. Unaiza. So, is there a difference between get link to team option or have them enrolling using team code? Ah, okay. Amin, do you want to um, <laughs> Yes, can, can. So, there's two, diff diff two different ways to invite your students. You can share the link, get link to team. So, when they click the link, enter, uh, they will go to the browser and then they will be asked to request. They will request to uh, access to your team. So uh, the team's owner have to manually accept them and their settings, okay? So it's better for them to use team code. If you use team code, uh, the students will just enter the code and straight away enter it to your team. So the team's owner doesn't need to do anything. So once one step. So if you share the link, it's two step. First, uh, student have to send, uh, have to request, and then you need to accept that. So it's better for you to send the team code. So it depends on how your students, if your students already know how to access team, uh, already have the account, know how to access team, and then it's better for you to use team code because they already seen, uh, obviously, the, the, the code when they try to create a team. Okay, uh, thank you. All right, so uh, our time is uh, up. I just managed to uh, stop the clock before uh, the, the, the ring rings. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, people are already uh, you'll be able to uh, create a uh, uh, class for uh, your your class okay and we are going to look at then how to communicate uh, with uh, the students in uh, Microsoft Teams okay so let's go back to our uh, uh, presentation just now Oops. Okay. Uh, wait, let me change my, okay, so, yeah. okay, right, can you see the screen? Okay, so, um, so just now what we did was uh, we created uh, our uh, class uh, and then we've also created uh, the uh, the link to the members and so you can you have already played around with the um, play around with set some of the settings in teams uh, what we haven't done uh, i think was create a channel uh, i will show it uh, a little bit later when we uh, go into working with students okay so um, uh, in teams 
uh, that the concept of working with students uh, is actually uh, based on uh, like a social uh, engagement. Okay, so what you do is uh, you have conversations uh, with students with the students inside teams, and uh, you can do that uh, using the students' uh, mobile phone. So it's going to be similar to um, uh, WhatsApp or Telegram, for example. But the benefit from uh, downloading and install the Teams uh, application inside the student's phone, uh, it will not distract them uh, with other uh, social messaging channels. Okay. So, for example, um, if you create your class in uh, WhatsApp, so while looking at your WhatsApp for your class, they will be also looking at um, the other channels that they have in um, the uh, WhatsApp or Telegram. And you know, kids uh, today, they are constantly on WhatsApp and uh, Telegram and Snapchat and whatnot. And the communication by the lectures can be easily get drowned in uh, whatever uh, social mes social uh, media messaging that uh, they are using. So I would suggest that uh, you uh, really advocate it to your students, and that's just for probably just for the sake of having uh, a separate channel for you to converse with your students um, to download and install Teams. And since you are already having the, you already have the class team that you manage your 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 courses in there, then that automatically becomes the the default communication channel between you and your student. Okay, so uh, I've installed uh, Teams uh, into my phone, and I've also installed uh, Teams. So this is uh, my my phone. So what I did, I grouped together all the Microsoft apps inside the uh, teams and then I get the students to also install in their phone and that allows you to uh, uh, to have a conversation with them inside the uh, platform. So this is a, a, a conversation with me and uh, students so actually I can uh, I, there will be there is a quite a lot of uh, conversation that you can scroll down but that is uh, what it looks like in uh, the phone and versus this is what it looks like in uh, the PC. So uh, the movement between uh, the PC or the laptop or the Mac to your um, uh, to your phone is actually quite quite similar. So once you updated the messages, then it will appear in uh, all the uh, other parts. Okay. So so uh, so that is a uh, All right. So, uh, so these are the ex uh, advanced ex examples of the Teams uh, messages. And another thing in uh, Teams, what it allows you to do is it allows you to add, so there's a spelling mistake there, uh, third party applications in Teams. And um, some of these uh, applications cannot be embedded into Spectrum. So, this becomes, Teams become a, a way for you to embed. Uh, the third party application, the web 2.0 uh, applications, so that uh, you can still use uh, this application. So I'm going to uh, show this. So these are some of the applications that are available. So uh, you have the uh, uh, website, you can add a website, you can add WooClap. So anybody uh, know a WooClap? Uh, Word. I'm going. I'm going to actually share you uh, a screen where uh, these are all the uh, applications that you have, that you can use. Okay, so let's uh, look as uh, look at this uh, application uh, plus uh, the what was it that I missed, uh, which is uh, to create channels. Okay, so let's create channels and then add a few uh, applications uh, for uh, the team. So I'm going to share uh, the Teams page. OK, so I'm going to share this. Um, OK, and let's look at uh, Teams. OK, and also uh, this class that I've just created. So go to the general channel. So this is the general channel. 
Um, so how do you add an, another channel for your class? So for example, uh, it's a topic that you wanted to add. So you click on add channel and then you can give a, a name of uh, the channel. So let's go, say for example, so uh, health and safety. Um, safety. The name of topic and so you, it's this option so you, you don't have to uh, do this um, and then um, so this will be a standard channel everybody can join in because uh, it's part of the class so what I do is um, click on add uh, oh let's uh, enable um, uh, the channel at everyone's sentences so that means uh, the students will see this channel automatically by default in their class click on add so now i have created uh, and added a channel which is called health and safety so from here i can add so these are the app, uh, the applications that's available that some of them cannot be used in uh, or cannot get cannot be embedded in your spectrum so let's say for example so these are the uh, the, the the normal or the the, the basic ones or the yeah, the, the basic ones. But you also have, uh, for example, uh, if you use Trello, for example, so, so you have Trello there, so you can actually add the Trello tab in there. Of course, you will need to uh, log in with your own uh, Trello um, uh, account. Okay, so you need to log in before uh, the Trello app will be uh, included for you. So let's uh, log in with uh, my Trello, for example, I don't remember what my Trello account is. Uh, so let's not do that. But what uh, the, the, the message is you need to log in with uh, an existing uh, Trello account so that then you can uh, use it. So uh, and there are a lot more uh, applications that available here. So actually the, the list goes down further so you have uh, things like uh, Quizlet, you have things like, um, I think I, re I remember seeing Zoom somewhere. Okay. No, no more Zoom. Okay. Um, so what else is, uh, if, ah, Kahoot. So those are the, 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 the kinds of um, applications that you can actually uh, enter or add to your class that you can use it here so uh, actually you scroll down the, the spot on, um, a lot of uh, useful things like uh, stormboard uh, so these are also uh, the applications that i use um, uh, what else so uh, webex so you have a webex so you can you can use that as well okay so so those are the, the examples of uh, applications that uh, you can use Okay, so um, uh, communication uh, with students. Okay, so uh, I've already already um, said earlier that communications can be done either by uh, using the the post and also uh, the, uh, the 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 phone. So an example of that. So this is actually a, a class that I'm having with my students right now. So uh, they are actually in this topic. So uh, this is uh, a list of uh, conversation, uh, conversations that I have with my students. Uh, you can also create quite a number of different uh, types of communication with uh, the uh, students themselves. So let's go to our uh, class that we have here. So in post, uh, you can, okay, let's say for example, you wanted to do a little bit uh, extra. So instead of a, a normal communication that you type here, you can actually create. Um, so you click on the format button at the bottom. Um, so instead of conversation, I want to make an announcement. Okay. So announcement is um, hello to this class. Okay. And you can uh, then you can have a. Uh, settings where you can allow everybody to reply or only you so if an announcement that you don't want people to uh, actually reply to just click on um, 
uh, UN moderators. So this is just for me to give them instructions. And you can also uh, choose an illustration for that. So this is uh, um, uh, uh, what you call the, uh, the default uh, background image for that. So you get this uh, really nice looking message and then uh, the uh, you can then type so in to to uh, okay. 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 so uh, using uh, the conversation with the students uh, allows you to either address everybody or address someone okay so if you want to address everybody in the group and uh, what this will do is it will show the uh, the, the message will, uh, is going to be uh, shown in their uh, application or in their phone. So let's say, for example, if one, I want to address everybody, so um, hello, so use the uh, add sign and uh, I just type the class. Okay, so once I start typing uh, using the um, add sign, I can select that okay so that means that is the the whole class will get this this message in their phones or in their their pc um so this intro message okay and click on send so everybody in this class is going to uh, see the message or for example, you want to um, get uh, my somebody from the team to uh, respond immediately. So for example, uh, because I have uh, Dr. Aoyong in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, ask Dr. Aoyong to... Uh, so Dr. Aoyong, uh, please, for example, um, upload the um, uh, assignment brief. the students. So in this case, uh, Dr. Ayong is going to uh, receive uh, a notification uh, in his team's uh, application on his phone that there is a message uh, addressed to him. Then we, he will actually need to uh, then uh, look at it and then uh, uh, respond um, to uh, the message. So, so uh, the communication uh, and engagement you know, with the uh, students using Teams app, it, it couldn't be um, uh, any more different than what you will see in um, uh, WhatsApp. Okay, but this gives a little bit more because then you can also, uh, if you see the, uh, here, so if you see the, uh, options here you can actually uh, like uh, so it's similar to uh, what you will see in uh, the class in, in in your social media and the same uh, uh, application if you open up in uh, the teams application in your phone it's actually a little bit more powerful what than what you have in uh, on your screen because in your phone uh, even guests so if the guests are in uh, the, using teams they can reply to uh, each uh, message separately. So that means you can actually reply to a message like this by clicking on the reply and just replying replying to that message. Because um, sometimes uh, I think it, uh, if you are a guest, uh, sorry, if you are, um, um, I don't remember now, uh, in a meeting, for example, uh, you only can just every every time you need to just start a new uh, conversation. Otherwise, uh, it will uh, it will not be as uh, as as pow as powerful as uh, the apps can do in the phone. So that is only one uh, I think um, drawback that probably uh, Microsoft will need to have a look at. Okay, so that is um, a communication with uh, the students. So use uh, Teams uh, communication get the students to. Uh, download teams in your phone uh, in their phones and uh, you should also download teams in your phone so that then, uh, you can actually have that conversation with the students okay so let's move on to the next um, 
part of the session which is um, okay so which is the uh, online engagement with teams meeting okay so uh, what we do now uh, as lecturers is we need to have um, an engagement with our students online so there's no there's no classes so there's nothing we can do if, uh, to, to meet uh, with students uh, so otherwise uh, you'll be um, uh, in handcuffs and you have to pay um, 1000 and then you have probably have to pay uh, the, the fee the, the fine for your students because you are uh, uh, creating or getting them to uh, actually come and meet you so online engagement uh, we can do with uh, teams meeting and so since you have created the class teams so now i'm going to show you how you can conduct online session with the students probably uh, some of uh, quite a lot of you have known this uh, already but we are going to show you uh, two ways that you can do uh, the online session uh, with the students and i'm going to also um, show you uh, a few um, management uh, features uh, in uh, the online sessions uh, and uh, some of this especially uh, uh, raise hand just came in uh, probably late last week so this week everybody should have the, the raise hand okay so we are going to look at um, uh, uh, recording so i'm going to show you how recording is saved into uh, the doctor yes dr shams do you have any question somebody is uh, asking. no just no, testing oh testing okay right okay so raise hand uh, what it does is uh, it, it shows uh, uh, hand raise in your team's page okay which is uh, uh, quite nice so uh, later you will find out how uh, that works okay so so we are going to look at uh, recording um, uh, raise hand how to save your recording uh, or into your class teams okay uh, background effects uh, the live captions in english uh, meeting notes whiteboard uh, share window and uh, upload powerpoint so uh, free free navigation powerpoint so this is uh, something that's uh, quite useful okay so uh, let's change the uh, sharing again so let's go back to uh, the teams page okay and go back to our class just now okay so this is the class so um, two ways for you to create uh, uh, a class or an online session so the first one is uh, by uh, an impromptu session during the meet, using the meet now button so what you do is if you scroll down at the bottom, uh, you look at the bottom of your your posts uh, in your either general channel or in any of the channels, you'll be able to see uh, the meet now button. Okay. For example, you want to have uh, a conversation with the students in uh, the health and safety, so you just click on uh, health and safety. Uh, or if you ha uh, have a general channel uh, or you want to do it in the general channel so you just click on uh, the general channel here so what you do is click on meet now uh, and then in the meet now it will automatically create uh, the the channel like this and what you do is you just uh, select a subject or create a subject so you can this is optional so let's say for example um, or uh, tutorial session so it can be also for your one for example okay and now what you just click on uh, meet now to uh, so i I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah, I think just now you meet now and then uh, the, the the meeting on hold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I should not be doing that. So, uh, so uh, basically that is uh, what it does. So, um, since I created a, a, a channel, uh, sorry, yeah, a, a meet now channel. So, of course, uh, this, 
this uh, session that we have here uh, becomes on hold. So let's um, share that again. Okay, so um, go back to themes. Okay, so meet now. So that is um, and after the session, so you can see that um, it will ask you about the call quality. So uh, maybe you want to uh, ask, um, rate that or not. So that's up to you. So, uh, so that is uh, an impromptu session using the Meet Now button. So that is one way for you to uh, create a conversation or start a conversation with your student. The second way to create or start a conversation uh, or a session with the student is using a schedule in the calendar. So using a scheduler. So um, what you do is uh, on your left hand side uh, in the Teams application, you have a calendar that you can click on. So let's say, for example, you wanted to have uh, a class. You, you want to schedule a class uh, with your students. So, so let's say, let's schedule a meeting. Okay. And the meeting, uh, so this is uh, going to be, for example, just now a tutorial one. And you want to, to do this in the future. So it's going to be, for example, on the 27th okay, of May. And it should uh, start. It should start at nine o'clock in the morning. Okay, and it will finish in two hours, so eleven o'clock. Okay, and uh, to get your students to automatically be uh, notified of uh, the uh, meeting, so you click on Add Channel. Okay, here, add channel, and it will automatically show you the channels that you wanted to add. So this channel, general, okay, and you may or may not have to add attendees. So normally, I would just leave it uh, because uh, that uh, because since it's already uh, mentioned in the channel, that means uh, the students will need to. Um, uh, read the uh, notification so what you do is you start in the uh, notifications here so um, please make sure to uh, complete the work given last week first so probably that's that's the kind of instruction that you might want to put in um and then you can uh, click on send. Okay, it will create the meeting for next week. Where is it? Ah, here. So this is the the meeting for next week. And what you will see in your Teams. Okay. So in the class Teams for construction safety, uh, in the general channel, uh, this will appear. So students will be able to. Uh, see uh, this notification um, so that then they will be able to uh, go and uh, join the meeting. So what you do later is uh, you can actually do meeting details because this have not started yet. Uh, you can have, uh, you can change the meeting option. Okay. Uh, uh, so if you click on meeting options, you can um, select a few things. Um, you can uh, allow people in your organization to present. You can also uh, let uh, callers uh, bypass the lobby and quite a number of uh, other uh, meeting session, meeting meeting options that you can uh, manage. Okay, so okay, so that is uh, the uh, meeting. Uh, channel creation so the the, the scheduling uh, creation and what else uh, can you do uh, in terms of uh, getting the students to uh, engage with you in the classroom okay so let's go back to oh not this one Let me change the settings for a bit. Okay. Okay, so yes. 
So now we are going to look at um, uh, a few other things. So uh, the raise hand feature. So raise hand uh, is uh, available on your screen. So by clicking uh, on raise hand, so I see a few people uh, tried uh, raise hand just now. So uh, the uh, the uh, feature is uh, available actually just last week, raise hand feature. Uh, and then background effects. So you see that I have a uh, Minecraft background. Okay. Uh, to change your background is click uh, is by clicking on the uh, more action button. So next to share button in your um, Office 365. Okay. And then you click on show background effects. So you click on uh, background effects. Are you seeing the screen? Oh, sorry. You are not seeing the screen. Uh, okay. Let me do that again. So uh, let's close this off. Okay, can you see my screen now? Right. So um, raise hand, uh, of course, raise hand. So background effects is this one. You can change uh, and select a uh, few backgrounds. So if you want to change your background, just click on that and uh, apply. So now I have a different background and um, Windows have a limited number of uh, background effects, so uh, but that uh, does not really uh, um, affect uh, the the learners or the yeah. But uh, it depends. It depends on uh, what you have in your background at home. So if you have a really messy house and you don't want. Uh, uh, your audience to see all, all, all those messages is just use or apply the background. Another good thing about uh, using background effects is it will give contrast between you and your background. So let's say for example, uh, my background now is actually very, very dark at the back. So having a, a light background enables uh, my, uh, uh, my, my view to be um, uh, projected a little bit more uh, forcefully to the audience. So uh, the focus of the audience is not going to be why is this uh, background so dark? Why? But uh, he's actually talking, and you have a background at the back. So Amira uh, is raising her hand. So do you have any question, Amira? Or are you just testing the feature? Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, I do actually. Um, but Zahid, Zahid, the background it's only available for some types of computers, right? Uh, so I just wanted to ask, what kind of computers are uh, can carry the backgrounds? Okay, so that's a, that's a good question. So probably somebody from uh, Microsoft wants to um, help with that. Anyone? Uh, May one or Ame? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Hello. Yes. Uh, usually, if it's a if it's a latest or uh, latest version of the laptop, she should be supported because it depends on the webcam basically. Uh, I'm not sure what version of the webcam or what is the hardware requirements, but usually for the latest, you know, updated laptops, uh, the latest hardware should support the 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 features, the background features. But it really depends on the webcam. Okay, thank you, uh, Amit. So we see uh, Dr. Chiam is, is uh, changing her backgrounds uh, as we speak. <laughs> okay, so so um, yes, uh, um, Dr. Chiam, I may also have a question on on the side here. So if a student initiates a recording. Uh, Will he or she be the owner? And is there any way to go around this? Uh, yes. That's it. Okay. So that means that uh, you need to then uh, uh, ask uh, the students that you are going to record uh, the uh, record the session, so that then uh, you can make it available. <coughs> yeah. Doctor, may I, I add some more? Yeah. Yep. So you can always change the meeting options mm -hmm. when you do the 
live teams online meeting when you create it from the calendar so once you create you have this meeting option uh doctor uh, can you show and can you click your calendar okay can you just click your calendar okay uh, and then okay double click all right and then choose meeting option at the top there okay. yes that the options okay let me so just do that uh, to that screen for a bit so this is the meeting options all right so can you see it yes mm. okay so with this meeting option always check down there who can present yes all right so uh who can present so everyone by default is everyone so okay. means everyone can uh can let any people inside the lobby can record can share the videos can mute people so if you want to restrict that that only for yourself only for the lecturers just click and then choose only you okay so that means mm. only me can record the session. yeah only can record can force mute people can accept people in the lobby and record as well okay so so choose only me so during the meeting call you always can change the students to to presenter if you want them to present to share their screen all right okay, thank you very much excellent thank you all right so let's go back to our um where is it so let's go back to our um list of uh, features that uh, we can do okay so let's look at whiteboard okay so apart from sharing your screen what you can also do is you can share uh, the whiteboard so sharing whiteboard um, okay sorry sharing whiteboard uh, is available uh, in the um, teams app so i why can't i see it now probably it's uh, because I'm not using the browser so let me browser okay. so how do I do this um, share oh yes I mean I, I could not find the share uh whiteboard on my on my app what is it in your app uh, yeah. uh in the web app uh web or, or desktop desktop, desktop right? can i find the whiteboard mm. Mm. oh because because you uh are you sharing other screen um no i'm not sharing other screen yeah, I don't think so. I'm not sharing at the screen. Mm -hmm. Let me check. Okay. Uh, but let me show you what the whiteboard does. Okay. Uh, so uh, actually, when you click on uh, the share button, what's that sound? Uh, on the right hand side, next to uh, the desktop, the window, the PowerPoint, you will be able to also see uh, the whiteboard and also the individual uh, share. Okay. So when you open up the uh, whiteboard for your uh, meeting, what you will see is uh, this page. Okay. Let me So, share so whiteboard. Okay. So, what you will uh, going to see is uh, this page, the Microsoft whiteboard. And what I can do is create a new whiteboard. Uh, but the only thing now, because um, I'm creating this um, from a different channel, I will not be able to invite everybody in uh, right away. So, Yes, um, I don't know why that sort of did not work uh, just now. 
but normally uh, you will be able to see uh, the whiteboard uh, right away in in teams uh, uh, i've actually uh, been using this uh, with my classes uh, quite a lot even in uh, teams so probably there's uh, i don't know if there's an issue uh, with uh, this just now but you will be able to see the whiteboard like this and uh, in here if you have a, a microsoft pen or if you have a tablet uh, with a pen then you can actually uh, write something or anything in uh, and you can also wipe it off there is an uh, option for changing the pen uh, intensity. You can have a smaller pen, you can have a bigger pen. Uh, you also have a uh, ruler where you can do uh, management of uh, rules. Okay, so you can change, you can twist the, ru the rulers. There's also a highlighter where you can highlight stuff. Okay, and what's good about uh, the um, the pen uh, is since uh, you uh, wanted sometimes to uh, annotate, for for example, on uh, different items. Okay, so for, uh, you have uh, options to upload a PDF, for example. So a PDF. Uh, so let's say you have this uh, open up in your your teams and just that one page so what i can do now is i'll just get rid of the um, ruler and i can show you uh, that uh, probably i can um, i want to underline uh, this one okay so give a tick for example um, so it allows you to um, do uh, things in there. Okay, you can also put in a uh, notepad uh, or a sticky note. Okay, so that uh, you can use. Okay, oops, I gonna put the sticky note at the back now. So now, so I can change the sticky note. Put it here, okay. It becomes a sticky note that uh, people can write in, okay, in your page. So, uh, a whiteboard is uh, also something that's uh, quite useful. For example, if you have um, uh, a PowerPoint uh, with the students, so what you can do is you can actually uh, convert that PowerPoint into a PDF, okay, and then insert it into. Uh, yeah. Oh, you don't have to uh, uh, convert the PowerPoint. You can actually upload a PowerPoint right away. You can also uh, upload a Word document. Okay, so let's upload a PowerPoint document. So let's say, for example, I'll open this uh, PowerPoint and uh, let's put in uh, this slide, for example. So can change uh, the slide let's put it somewhere else okay and what i uh, uh, realized when using uh, the whiteboard with my students is uh, i should have actually arranged the uh, uh, the whiteboard a little bit nicer because the whiteboard can be saved and then can be shared with your students so if when when you save your your whiteboard uh, for your students, then they will be able to then go back to the notes that you uh, uh, marked in your in your uh, whiteboard, so that then they can um, uh, go back to the notes and then uh, probably uh, uh, revise uh, whatever uh, lessons that you have uh, gone through with, with them. So the whiteboard is also uh, quite a powerful uh, tool uh, for you to uh, use when you are using uh, Teams for uh, the uh, online learning. Okay, so let's, um, okay. Um, of course, uh, for 
uh, whiteboard. Uh, what you um, uh, need to do is you need to uh, install uh, the meeting. Uh, sorry, install the, the whiteboard. So you can actually go to uh, the Microsoft Store to uh, download the whiteboard application. So uh, what you uh, uh, can do is uh, you can download it in your PC and then you'll be able to use that PC uh, for teaching. Uh, share windows, of course, uh, sharing windows is um, quite natural. So uh, everybody now knows how to share uh, their uh, windows. Okay. Um, and then, uh, of course, when you share PowerPoint, what it allows you to do is if you upload a, a PowerPoint, let's say, for example, so I'm opening a PowerPoint here uh, on the left hand side of your screen, you'll be able to actually navigate uh, the PowerPoint uh, yourself without me having uh, the navigate the PowerPoint for you. So if you, for example, have re read all the uh, PowerPoint and then you wanted to move on to the next PowerPoint, you can actually do that without me uh, having um, any input on where the PowerPoint is uh, when I'm going to, when I'm presenting it. So it allows you uh, an extra control uh, in going through the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And uh, another uh, useful uh, feature in uh, the uh, Teams uh, meeting is the um, N, uh, N meeting for all. Okay, so that is uh, reserved for those who created the um, meeting and uh, those who uh, have control over the, the settings. So uh, since this one, this meeting is not uh, uh, arranged by me, so I don't have the power to um, turn off or end meetings. So uh, that is a reserve to uh, people who actually uh, added or uh, created uh, the meeting. So that is also something that's uh, useful for uh, the learning. Okay, so that is um, using um, Teams meeting to conduct your classes. Of course, uh, one, one thing that people uh, sometimes forgot in uh, the uh, use of meeting is actually the, the meeting chats. So I had the class yesterday. Uh, so I was a guest lecture for uh, a lecturer, uh, Dr. Dr. Sapia uh, uh, from um, Faculty of Economics. So uh, I used the team, uh, the, the meeting chat to get students to give feedback. Okay, so you can share uh, quite a number of things here. You can actually uh, uh, type uh, a message. You can, uh, for example, add. Um, you can uh, add uh, uh, a URL, for example, or a, a feedback form uh, in here uh, from uh, the internet, and they uh, will be able to then to uh, respond to that um, feedback form. You can also use the chat uh, to uh, get the students to, let's say, for example. Uh, do the attendance. So how do you do that? How do you get the students to use the chat to uh, put in a, an attendance? So uh, the way uh, uh, well, a, a trick to do this is by getting them to type their name and their metric number. So everybody who comes in, so you can give an instruction, everybody who comes in should type in their name and their metric number. So it becomes um, some sort of uh, uh, a measure of uh, their attendance because otherwise the, the teacher will not be able to see um, who uh, actually uh, attended uh, or record who actually attended uh, the, the session other than going to the show participant option. So show participant then you'll uh, be able to see the list but from the show participant will not uh, be able to uh, have uh, the uh, list of um, uh, of the attendance by or the, the students uh, for you. So that is um, that is uh, attendance and also uh, using uh, Teams meeting. Okay, so any question uh, in Teams meeting?
anyone want to say uh, anything or anything to add for this meeting for your class so hopefully you'll be able to uh, do uh, quite a number of things if your if your class is in english you can actually enable live captions so it will actually um, uh, capture your uh, your your words and uh, the words are going to be to appear in uh, the, the bottom of uh, the screen so i can actually do that so turn on live captions and uh, automatically so uh, on live caption so now automatically every time i say anything uh, of course it will come up but sometimes uh, since we are not native speakers uh, so we need to have our we need to put on our uh, american slang then you will not be able to have the uh, right uh, live captions uh, but sometimes it is uh, funny to just read uh, the live caption uh, pick up uh, by patients, especially uh, people who are not native speakers, which is uh, sometimes uh, quite hilarious. Okay, so that's uh, live caption. So, uh, any question uh, about the uh, Teams meeting for prop classes? Oh, yes, recording. So, when uh, you have finished uh, the recording, so now I'm going to show you how. Uh, you can get the uh, meetings from uh, stream into your classes okay so uh, let's say so this is uh, the class that i have with my students and every time i finish the class i record the stream uh, i record the uh, uh, what you call the, the the classes and i enable it into my class stream so if i open this up Okay, sorry, wait, um, before I start this. So when I click that, so let me share you what happens. It will open up a different uh, window. Okay, so this window opens up. Okay, can you see the window? And this is uh, the, the class that I recorded. So uh, once you click the thing, uh, so this will go uh, and then I will be able to actually play that. Okay, and this is uh, this is the uh, whiteboard that I use uh, with my uh, students. So you can actually see uh, the whiteboard at the top, and you can also see uh, the list of students uh, at the bottom, where I, I teach them how to uh, measure uh, concrete foundation uh, using uh, by uh, with the help of uh, the uh, whiteboard. Okay, and uh, when you set the whiteboard to english you will see that uh, it will auto generate the uh, transcript for you okay so the way to do that is actually to go to the three dots and update video details okay uh, so in the in this video details you can actually uh, rename the, the session if you want to put in hashtags you can put in uh, hashtags uh, if you are giving lectures uh, in English, so change it to English and automatically uh, in English it will give you uh, the, uh, the the transcript. Okay, so so let's go back. Oh yeah, sharing. So uh, permissions, you need to uh, allow the permissions so that then uh, people in your channel, so this one is the channel that I uh, allow the video for, is um sorry so i allow uh, my students to be able to see uh, this uh, lecture okay um in this channel so uh, how do i uh, and then what you do is you already have this and what the, what can you do with the transcript okay so remember because we are not um, american slang people so it will have some funny um transcripts that is generated for you you can actually go in okay and edit the transcript so like this for example uh, 
if you think that uh, this is wrong, so instead you let's say your when you see, then it will auto auto generate the uh, the, the uh, it will uh, edit the transcript for you, which is uh, I think uh, is great. If for example your audio quality is not that good, okay, and uh, you have the time to do uh, to to actually uh, correct the transcript, of course. Since it's actually uh, one and a half hours of lectures, I, I would not uh, actually go in and um, correct the transcript myself unless uh, I find that uh, my sound was really, really bad. Okay, so how do I then share uh, this um, uh, recording uh, with my class? So let's go back to uh, my Teams just now, so let's change the screen once again. So click on okay. So I go back to my teams. So I want to make this um, stream uh, available uh, to uh, this class, okay, construction uh, safety. So what I can do is I can actually. Uh, go in and um, oops. okay so what I can do is um, I click on the stream uh, application and it requests me to paste a link from uh, Microsoft stream okay so uh, what I would do is actually so let's change back to the um the, the channel or uh, the, the view just now so uh, so sorry i need to change the view again and again it's because um oops wait a minute okay so the top first let's go back to my uh, earlier screen okay so now here, you see this uh, share button. So click on the share and copy the direct link to the video. So click on copy. So after I've copied that, I need to go back to my Teams uh, window. Okay. So in the Teams window, so here, so Teams window, uh, I just paste this link. Okay. So that is the link uh, for that and then automatically it will come out. So then you can uh, put a message, for example, uh, uh, so this is for students. Here is the video from our on uh, complete measurement for example so that they know that this is the one from complete measurement because uh, if you do classes online uh, you will have many recordings so they would know which one to find okay so that is it so then uh, this stream is available for your students. So if they need to revise on concrete measurement, they'll just watch this uh, stream. So that is how you um, enable your uh, classroom, uh, your classes or your students to uh, follow the, uh, the learning uh, in your stream. Okay. Uh, there is also another cool thing about stream that I have not tried yet, which is so let me change the screen once again. Okay, which is um, so you are watching this. So instead of uh, other than transcript, you also have this items at interactivity. Okay, so interactivity. So it says here, make your video more engaging by adding adding survey, quiz, poll using Microsoft. I have not tried it yet. I would suggest that you uh, try this, uh, and it seems that if you look at the uh, the settings, 
you can um, position the pole in a certain timeline. That means, for example, if you uh, cover uh, three topics in your uh, online classes or, or online session. So after the first topic, you may want to add an assessment or a form so that then uh, you'll be able to un uh, get the students to interact with the form so you know that they understood what you have uh, done uh, at that time. Okay, and then for uh, you can uh, you can probably add more uh, checkpoints to get uh, to know whether the students understand in a different time. So I think um, that would some that is something that you could try uh, with your class. I have not tried this yet. So maybe uh, Amir uh, from um, uh, Microsoft have, uh, have tried this feature. So do you want to say anything about this? Uh, sorry, is it the, about the form? Uh, quizzes, the interactivity. right? The interactivity yeah. is actually. The interactivity is only what you can do is uh, you can create quizzes. Usually, uh, lecturers or teachers will put, uh, will create a quiz from forms and then copy the link and then put it over here. And then you can put uh, at which duration should they able to get the, the, the quiz so that the students uh, must let's say must go through all the videos and learn and then and then by then they can answer the quiz so that's the uh, usual practice okay mm. so um, uh, how do the, the lecturers then uh, get the results of the quiz uh, it's from the forms okay. so when you click quiz from the forms all the results will be there will be oh, in the forms okay. so you mm. need to go to uh, microsoft forms uh, to uh, retrieve the, the quiz answers. Mm -mm. Okay, so yes. uh, there you go, folks. So uh, I hope somebody uh, uh, would uh, like to try that uh, interactivity inside uh, the uh, box and then uh, use that uh, with your students. So let's look at the chats. Um, so, okay, so uh, Dr. Chiam. Uh, uh, what she did is, is she add the video as a tab. Okay, so uh, okay, so that is another way for you to change that uh, or use that. So you, you use it as a tab. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Chiam, for the um, uh, for the tip. Okay, so let's uh, go back to our uh, presentation here. Okay, so uh, up. So hopefully you uh, already understood uh, and um, uh, would be able to uh, then use uh, the um, themes uh, for your uh, online engagement with uh, your students. So let's look at uh, the next part, which is um, Sway. Okay, so Sway is uh, the application that I uh, use just now for this uh, presentation. So, so I can put it to a full screen like this. Then uh, you don't see the, uh, the, the, the the frame of the uh, website uh, in the top. Uh, and so, what Sway does is actually uh, it is an alternative. Uh, as a storytelling app for uh, your students. So um, I've used it uh, in, in many uh, situations before. I've used it in uh, conferences uh, where I do use the Sway to present uh, my conference uh, material. I've also used it in uh, meetings um, to uh, show the the, the meeting attendees, uh, what uh, I did or what we did, okay, uh, and what it does is it, it uh, gives you a very visually uh, interesting way to uh, lay out your content. And uh, another good thing is um, it would auto um, automatically, uh, what do you call, 
uh, uh, allow itself to um, be viewed very efficiently in different devices. Okay, so if you're watching uh, a sway using uh, your tablet, it will uh, responsibly uh, change the, um, the layout so that it is, uh, it is uh, comfortable to be watched in tablet or in phones or in your desktop. So let's watch this um, video uh, today. Okay, and then we are going to have a break so that then what I want you to do is I want you to create your own uh, sway uh, for uh, the, the session. Okay, so let's watch this first. Change the settings so that then you'll be able to hear the um, the video. Not this one. Share YouTube system audio. So by now you should be able to hear it. Want to create a visually striking presentation without having to spend a lot of time on it? Then say hello to Sway, a digital storytelling app from Microsoft Office that lets you easily create digital presentations, newsletters, and blogs in minutes. First, let's start with what you want to put in. Text, photos, videos, all of the above. No worries, Sway makes it simple, even if you have them all saved in different places. Are you more analytical than creative? Or you just don't have time to spend hours and hours on formatting? Sway's built-in design engine quickly puts all of your content into a nice cohesive layout that looks finished and ready to show off. Everyone happy with this style? Sway lets you switch between multiple layouts, designs, and color palettes in seconds. Wondering how teammates can add more content to your Sway and if their email limits can handle all of your photos and videos. With Sway, it's as easy as this. Now you won't have to worry about uploading and downloading file attachments. And teammates can simply open the link and start adding more content in. With Sway, everyone will have the latest version at hand. Now, it's presentation time. Is your audience in a boardroom, a cafe, or on the go? Sway dynamically adapts, so it looks great on every screen. No more worrying that viewers will have to squint at their phones while looking at your content. Finally, an app that is so easy and intuitive, teams will actually enjoy using it. Want to see it for yourself? Head over to Sway.com and let us do the rest. Okay, easy, isn't it? So you just put in the uh, different uh, um, tags and pictures uh, that you have, and then it will uh, automatically uh, change or uh, uh, allow the, uh, the, the the program itself is going to actually arrange uh, this way for you. So uh, let's see um, uh, my screen again. Okay, so this is the the one that I use. Um, the, the sweet presentation that I use. So if I click on edit, so it will uh, show me this view where I uh, am using uh, uh, what I'm using sweet to create the presentation for you. And uh, remember just now uh, they, they talk about changing uh, the, the design. Okay, so you can see the design is like this. If I click on the styles, I can change the style. Uh, right away, so you have uh, you have different styles. So you have a vertical uh, that goes down. You can also have a horizontal. So now it, it work, looks like this. It work it walks uh, to the side. Okay. Uh, or you can put it as slides. So this is a slide. So you just click on one by one. So this is the shadow. This is the uh, class. Okay. So. So you you check you and it will uh, automatically rearrange your 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 view uh, relative to whatever device that you are using, and you can also um, change the uh, the layout. So for example, here uh, I use this um, green ABC. I can quickly change to that one, so it will automatically change it to that one. Of course, that is uh, not really uh, that nice looking. So 
let's look at that one. Probably, yeah, that one looks uh, okay. That's good. Uh, orange, um, not a big fan of orange, so let's not go there. So we can actually, there is quite a number of um, layouts uh, and customization that you can have. So like this one, so it will change you your fonts, your um, your your background color, your your watermark background. So it's it's quite important. It's quite uh, useful. So you can actually customize it. Uh, yourself here so you can change the fonts you can change the uh, animation emphasis text size uh, change okay uh, and that is something that uh, is available uh, that you can use so um let's create so uh, let's show you how i create one new uh suite okay and then i'm going to give you about 20 minutes uh to create your own uh design Okay, so let's create a new uh, suite. So I actually have uh, quite a number of uh, suite presentations already uh, created. Okay, so you can either create new, you can start from a topic, and then uh, start from a document. So let's um, uh, so let's try start from a topic. So what does this do? Okay, so uh, okay, so it uh, what it does is actually it asks us to enter a topic and then help get started. So let's go with the biggest topic right now which is uh, COVID-19 see what so, uh, created so sorry right so write it so let's see what is that so, coronavirus Wikipedia couldn't find COVID-19. Ah, okay. So automatically it creates this um, storyline for us, complete with pictures. Oh, very really nice. Okay. So you can do that. Uh, and this is uh, from uh, Wikimedia or Wikipedia. So other than that, so let's not uh, use that. So let's go and create something from new. Okay. So create new. So title your suite, so you can title it uh, any way you want. So for example, uh, let's do with uh, stair designs. So of course, um, uh, you can do, so the first slide or the first cut is always the uh, heading one cut. So uh, if you see here, so this is the heading cut. You can uh, in the heading card you can add a background you can you add uh, you can also add a logo so if you remember just now uh, the first uh, slide that i have you uh, you see an ad, small edit logo uh, inside it isn't it and that is uh, added by using the add, add a logo um, function so let's add the background and click when i click on add the background uh, the search function would automatically share suggest uh, a source that uh, i can uh, take okay so for example i just click stair design it will uh, automatically give me a creative commons uh, copyrighted uh, image that i can choose and actually put into my um, designs like that okay so so if i click on the design so i will be able to see this so this is the uh, the first cut for uh, doing the uh, design for uh, the heading. Okay, so let's go back to the storyline. So uh, let's say, for example, I want to add um, facts. So let's uh, put in so facts are important so that you. up and down the building okay. so that is um, the text for that and if we look at the design uh, what we can see is so this automatic uh, create uh, that the design for uh, the stand so let's uh, put in uh, more stuff in there so you can actually 
uh, put in um, so let's click on the data and this one is um, um, engineering details okay you can add uh, a heading to okay so in, um, this one is um, the enforcement number and you can add another heading uh, that one is um, um, structure so, so let's uh, just play around with this so um, then uh, so enforcement so uh, let's put in so and you can always find the um, information that's freely available online to put in into your um, uh, staircase, not so staircase, uh, to your uh, three presentation. So, um, so let's get that one, so add that one into your presentation. So that's a picture. Uh, so just play around with this. So let's put in that one also as uh, the picture. You can also have a video. So uh, you can actually uh, just bang put in the video there and um, you can put in caption here so um, this is how to by enforcement for example uh, and so let's look at the design again so uh, this is uh, the sway that we created for stair design just now uh, then you it will give you the second heading and also will show you uh, the enforcement so it, it says here it's already put in this is how to write type enforcement so in the caption what you write in the caption will, uh, will allow you to uh, will be will appear in uh, the, the video or uh, in the in the, in the uh, design that you uh, chosen and of course you can always change the um, the design so that then uh, probably you want to use this, this one okay so it will automatically change it for you so now uh, you uh, it looks like this okay so it will automatically uh, arrange the uh, the images for you you can you can also change the uh, highlight of the image as well so for example you can uh, uh, change the focus point so it will tell you it will ask you whether either the entire image or, or is important or you can only select that one part uh, as important and then uh, the layout will be determined for uh, the tablet view and also the phone view it will show the important focus point that uh, the users want you can also uh, group your uh, your images so what you do is you click on uh, select the cards and we'll group that okay so this one is a, a automatic group so let's see uh, what this means in the uh, design okay so now so this is a group oh but uh, it doesn't really change anything so let's change the group to uh, the view of the group to be something else so let's go with slideshow uh oh yeah slideshow so change the, the group as slideshow so let's see uh what it does to our presentation in the design okay so now when you do uh when you go through uh, the presentation you see that this one becomes a slideshow that the user can uh, scroll through and then move to the next one so which is this is a video so then the video uh, your uh, storyline okay so you can actually change uh, quite, uh, play around with the um, the settings in here so let's move on to the structure for example so let's see what what else we can upload okay we can put in uh, text 
okay, we can put in media. So there are a few things that we can put in is the media. As a media, we can have an image. You can also add uh, videos. So videos, uh, you can get videos from YouTube. You can either search for the name of the video. So for example, um, staircase. Okay, and you put the video uh, like that, or you can actually go to uh, YouTube. Okay, so let's go to YouTube and search for case design. Okay, so let's have this uh, video design of staircase. So let's Use that one. So what you do is you click on the share button. Click on copy. So it will copy the URL for that. And you go to your search function or search window and click on that. So automatically you'll be able to see uh, that. So we add this as a video. So we just drag the video there. So it will allow you to uh, add in uh, the uh, different items that you have in your um, in your uh, video okay so that is how uh, we uh, create a switch so you can actually play around with the design with the uh, with the storyline so let's go back to my uh, presentation just now so this one Okay, so this is what I did uh, for uh, this uh, this session. So I've created a stack. Um, I also uh, put in uh, groupings of uh, pictures. Uh, I use the heading two cards as um, uh, stock um, uh, as a as a as a stock uh, point, so that then we can do the the demo. Okay, uh, so we are now um, so. Let's create a simple presentation. So uh, we are now at um, almost four o'clock already. So instead of um, so, uh, what do you want? Uh, so what is that? Do we go on with um, the, uh, the the break that you can uh, create or play around with simple pre presentation, or do you want to just uh, continue and let's look at uh, assignments at the back? You can continue. So you can continue. Or okay, some people can want to continue. Some people want assignment. Okay, so let's um uh, have a ten minutes break. Uh, so that then um uh we will uh, have uh, allocate a few a um, few minutes to then people to just try it out uh for a while. So that then uh, we can uh, do uh, the assignment. So uh, and of course it will also give me a uh, break from uh. Quite a long, uh, quite a long of, uh, quite long uh, talking uh, since uh, two, two o'clock. So uh, I have a ten minutes break. Then you can play around with the swing, uh, and then we will start again at ten past um, four or about eight past four uh, to continue with the um, assignments and also feedback. Okay, so. So I'll leave you, uh, I'll give you 20 minutes, uh, sorry, uh, 10 minutes to have uh, the presentation. So we are all going, going to have a break right now. Okay, um, welcome back to uh, the session. So let's uh, go back to uh, our presentation. Or we'll change this to Slides really okay. So let's change that, that back. Okay, so um ah, uh, one thing you can also um so with this uh, design, what you can do is uh, if you don't want to like, select uh, the the different types of uh, interactions, you can actually go and click on remix and so uh, 
it will say uh, let's switch change design and layout for you so just go and click this one so it will change this uh, and you can click it uh, many times so that then uh, you'll be able to the the, 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 the application will automatically uh, remix the uh, the design uh, for you when you uh, are presenting okay so uh, so that is one uh, of the sort of uniqueness of uh, sway that uh, will help you to do stuff in like there okay now it changed the uh, layout um, and also the, the fonts for it uh, okay so let's look at um, assignments and feedback so this will be the last part of our um, uh, our uh, session for today okay so um, so let's look at creating assignment in teams so uh, when you're creating uh, assignment in teams so remember uh, it's only available when you create the class teams okay and the system will automatically uh, create uh, the assignments and the grades back for your class so uh, this feature is not available in other group types so if you choose a staff um, teams or you choose uh, 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 the other team so you do not get this assignments and grid features so if you wanted to use this class for class and you wanted to do uh, assessment or assignment in your teams then use the class type uh, and uh, for this uh, feature uh, what you can do as an assignment is Doctor, yep are you sharing any screen i will not be I'm not able to see any. Uh, okay, so let me, so, sorry. I, I am actually sharing the uh, Sway screen right now. So you don't see that? Or is it just me? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm seeing the screen creating assignment in Teams. Uh, uh, it's share. Uh, it's Sway, okay. sorry. Okay. I think no. it's just me. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay. I, okay let, let's uh, continue. Um, so um, you can create the uh, assignment uh, as uh, an assignment or a quiz. Uh, you can also recycle uh, all the assignments from any other classes that you have managed uh, using the from existing uh, uh, tab okay, or uh, feature. And of course, you can um, look at the, uh, then we're going, going to look at the assignment settings. How do you create rubrics? How to use forms uh, with teams and also uh, how we do uh, markings uh, with the rubric so so these are the uh, the views for that uh, view for that so let's go back to our uh, class uh, team so let's share the the next screen uh, right now so let's go back to this teams okay and then go to our class row okay which is this one the ib3004 and so what we are going to do now is uh, let's create an assignment for this so remember uh, only in the general channel that you'll be able to see the assignments and grades uh, in the the other channels that you created you will not be able to see those okay so it's only in the assignment and grade and the reason why it's the uh, it's there or it's here is because um this is the the place where automatically everybody who is a member of the class who is a student in the class will be uh, situated you can actually uh, create a channel which is closed so uh, let's uh, show that uh, quickly so you can actually change this privacy to private so only certain people can go into uh, this channel so you don't want to have the assignments and also grading there so that's why the gen in the general tab or in, yes in the general tab or in the general channel you will only see the uh, assignments and grades so that is uh, how uh, this is uh, created and uh, structured so let's go uh, to the assignment so what you do with assignment uh, of course with the first time you will uh, ask, uh, show you this get started just click on that and what you can do to create an assignment so click on create okay and see here there are three options so assignments or quiz and from existing so from existing will ask you to actually open up your different uh, classes that already have an assignment so this is uh, the, the 
the class that I have created. So this one is uh, from uh, edX uh, team, okay. And this is uh, I think it's um, different faculty who uh, accidentally or uh, or look asked me to put in uh, to look at the assignment setting. Okay, so let's create an assignment. And what we can do in assignment, of course, you will see that we have uh, the title. So you need to click on the title. So let's say the title is um, assignment one. You can change the category. You can add a category. So this becomes a tag. And you can put in the instructions. Uh, and the instructions can be, uh, for example, um, answer or Okay. Um, please create okay. uh, a model of staircase. Okay. And can you, you can also add uh, resources so you can uh, actually uh, add the resources from the uh, OneDrive. So this is actually your uh, own OneDrive. You can also go to Teams and go to a, a different tab or uh, different Teams. So for example, you have a Teams uh, that have a, a file. So let's see which file. Uh, so let's go to that one. I think I have uh, some documents there. Okay. So, so let's say, okay, I'm using that one. So I can attach that as a resource, okay. By default, students cannot ex uh, edit the file. Uh, of course, that is very good. Uh, you can also add rubrics. So we'll talk about rubrics a little bit later. Uh, you can, so it's already assigned to this um, group, okay, or this, um, this class. Uh, and it's uh, either for all students or you can actually differentiate so uh, since this class doesn't have a student, so you, uh, you can't really um, have the list. But if, for example, I will show you a, a class where you have a, a group of students. So let's save this first. So save, uh, we, we'll save it in a draft. So let's go back to this. So this is, I've already tested with um, uh, the class that I have right now. So I have a few drafts. So uh, of course, I'm not using this uh, at the moment with my students because uh, I'm doing all my assignments in Spectrum. But here, so this is the list of the students in the class. You can actually uh, select people, uh, for example, like that, as the group, and then, so it will tell you that there's seven students who will need to submit that assignment. So that is how you can actually select uh, students uh, or um, so just clear. That means all students uh, will need to uh, do the assignment. So let's go back to our uh, demo class just now. So um, go to assignment. Okay. So remember, we already saved it in the draft. Okay. So what else can you can do? You can actually uh, select a due date for the assignment. So Let's say I'm going to give the due date to be on uh, Friday on the 22nd and you can edit this setting. Uh, you can schedule the assignment in the, into the future. For example, if you, you don't want to open the assignment just yet, you can actually change this, uh, just enable it and then probably put it uh, on the 20th and then it will automatically post the assignment on uh, at nine o'clock. So due date, uh, what it does is uh, this is, it will be the, the published due date for the students. You can also have a close date, which for example, if you want to uh, disable student from submitting too late. So for example, uh, by 25, you wanted to start marking. So everybody must submit by then. So you can actually enable this option where uh, now it says that assignments will be posted on Wednesday, due on Friday, and late hand in is allowed until Monday, where after Monday, uh, the students will not be able to submit their work. So just uh, allow that. 
So that means now uh, the uh, assignment is uh, scheduled and that is um, how you then create the assignment. So now you have this uh, assignment that you've created. So uh, once you are finished uh, with this uh, and you're happy with the uh, assignment or uh, the, the setting of the assignment, then you can click on schedule. So the schedule assignment, so this is the schedule assignment that you have created. And what the uh, students uh, are going to see in their uh, assignments is uh, they will see this assignment uh, for them due, which is due on the 22nd of May. Okay, so that is assignment. So let's look at um, rubrics. So rubrics is a good way for you to uh, assign marks for students uh, so that then it will be easier for you to grade uh, them. Okay, so um, same like Spectrum, uh, Office 365 uh, class teams allows you to uh, also create a rubric. Okay, so uh, a rubric can be created uh, by creating a new rubric or if you have already created a rubric before, what you can do is you just um, use the rubric. So for example, I have this uh, research design rubric that I have um, created okay, just now. So what I do is just apply this, just click on next and it will already have given me the, the title. Uh, so this one I have programmed before and it will also uh, allow me to put in points. Okay, so marks, I can give marks here. So let them, I, now I can change this. So this one I'm giving five. This one I'm giving three marks. This one is two. You can also add uh, more uh, rows so that then you can assess the students on different um, uh, criteria. I can, you can also add more columns. Then you can add uh, category. So this category probably then we can name it as poor. Okay, so um, not, uh, nothing entered. Okay, or not achieved. Okay, so to, in the interest of time, so let's just copy and paste everything here. Okay, and uh, the mark is zero. Okay. And uh, then uh, when you are happy with the uh, settings, just click on attach. So now, so this is the assignment and what we do is we update the assignment. So this is the assignment for uh, the students uh, that we have created. So uh, that is uh, using the assignment card for uh, the assignment. You can also create uh, a quiz for the students. So remember just now we have two. First is the assignment, and the second one is uh, the quiz. So the quiz would be actually created using Microsoft Forms. Okay. So um, to do uh, the Microsoft Form and uh, to have it embedded right into your um, uh, assignment uh, for the students, uh, you can actually uh, use uh, a form that you have. Uh, created before, say for example, you already have this uh, quiz that you've created, so you can actually just append it to your assignment right away, uh, and it will give you the points, and also then, of course, you have the same due date, uh, time due, uh, and everything else that you can uh, change or uh, set up. For example, if you want uh, this to be a very, very short uh, assignment, what you can do is you just schedule the assignment and the students will need to answer uh, from nine o'clock and you can close it uh, right away uh, at uh, 10 o'clock for example okay and then the close time was um, 10 so uh, that means uh, the assignment is only uh, the quiz is only available for one hour for the students so if they did not manage to submit on time, then that's it. So click on that. So this is the assignment and of course this is uh, applied to all students. So that is uh, how you then create uh, or use uh, uh, and pre-existing uh, forms uh, as a quiz. So what you do is just schedule. 
then it's, it's available. So let's create something from scratch. Okay, so let's create an assignment from scratch using the Microsoft form. And let's see how we program the uh, quiz okay, for the students. So let's look at the page where we create the assignment. Okay, so let's just see this page now. So can you see the uh, Microsoft Forms uh, page? Okay, so now you have the um, the view for the Microsoft Forms. So what you can choose now here in the in the view. So remember we are doing a quiz for our students. So you click on new quiz. Okay, and then automatically you can actually add. Okay, so first uh, put in the name of the quiz. So this is, for example, quiz for year two. Okay, real Of course, you can change um, uh, image. So this is um, just uh, up to you. So uh, let's search for picture of quiz. So let's choose that one. Okay, just add it. Then makes it a little bit uh, much nicer looking. You can also have a team uh, idea. So what you do is just put in. For example, let's use this one. Okay. It will give a background to your quiz, so it looks a little bit more uh, eye-catching. Okay, so let's uh, go on the uh, business of creating the questions for the quiz. So you have uh, a few options uh, of quiz uh, questions that you uh, can ask your students. So it can be a choice. Okay, uh, let's look at the choice first. Then we are going to look at uh, the other ones a uh, bit later. So let's go with the choice. So let's click on the choice. So of course, this is um, either can be a multiple choice. It can be a true false. Uh, it can be a multiple right answer uh, quiz as well. So uh, it's actually about three and one. So uh, what about a multiple choice question? So uh, what? How do we do that? So multiple choice uh, question. So um, push, um the right car the or um Facebook. We know that uh, Facebook is blue, isn't it? Uh, it can be also yeah. So uh. Once we create put in blue, then uh, it will automatically give us uh, more options. So you can just put in, okay. So it gives, um, uh, it makes it a little bit easier. So it's, uh, it's um, makes your life a little bit easier when you are uh, asking the question. So it will give you ideas in what to put in, okay. So, and then you can also put in the points. So, for example, for this, I want to give just one point. So, we can, uh, I'm going to add another set of questions. So, but this one, I'm going to do um, uh, a true false question. Okay, so true false question. So, um, uh, Yahoo use oh, uh, Yahoo Messenger. People from uh, that time would know. But yeah, okay, sorry, I forgot to put in the right answer. So this is the right. Um, let me edit this first. So this is the right answer. So I need to click that one. So that is the correct answer. And you can also put in the feedback for that, the uh, message. So yes, it's right. 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 Okay. You can also put in a message for people who Select the wrong answer. Okay. This is 
is not actually a good um, way to put in feedback. So please uh, never put in no try again. I would suggest that you put in, um, please get your, get your uh, facts. So, uh, so for example, and this actually whatever. So, putting feedback for uh, students actually help them to learn. So, uh, uh, please think about writing a good quality feedback for the students. So, so this is the multiple, multiple choice, which is one wrong, uh, what's one uh, right answer. So let's look at the uh, uh, true false question. How do we ask true false question? So it's simple. So just add one is true, and then the option, second option is false. Okay, and then of course the answer is true, and then uh, you can also add uh, a new type of multiple choice, which is multiple choice with uh, uh, many correct answers. So what you do is again go to multiple choice. So um, let's uh, ask the question. Um, Google um, and what can you do? Oh, can have um, several, uh, several applications. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? So you know that only these two are the correct answers. So you can actually allow for that. So multiple answers, you need to enable this first. So now you have more than one correct answer. And this one is a wrong answer. And of course, uh, for quizzes, you would want to make sure that every answer or every question is required so that then the students will not have any uh, choice in answering uh, the question. Okay, uh, what you can also do in uh, the uh, Google form is actually at branching. So branching uh, allows you to uh, ask follow up questions into uh, the the quiz. So for example, to expand on this question, you you need to. Then, uh, so what you need to do is you need to actually create um, the, uh, the all the questions first. So before then, before you could have, you are able to use the branching uh, function. So let's uh, go back uh, to our let's go back uh, to our list of questions. So uh, apart from the multi choice, you can also add um, uh, essay question. So essay question, uh, what you do so. Write uh, a commentary on um, the issues surrounding uh, Zoom. Okay, uh, and then of course, long answer. So then, the, then the students will need to uh, write. Uh, quite long okay so that okay so you can also ask a question um, ask them to rank uh, things okay so uh, of course set options in the correct order when you share the quiz options will appear in random order okay so um, um, name Company exists first. So the right answer must be IBM. So this is the right answer, IBM, and then you have uh, Dell, 
calculator and then um, uh, let's say what else uh, is the new uh, tech, tech, tech technology uh, technology company um, alphabet okay so let so this is the uh, correct order but when you ask the question later it will be in a different order so after you um, uh, after you are happy with the uh, questions or with the yeah with the question quiz that you have you can actually click on the preview so that then uh, it will come up like this so that then uh, the students who uh, can actually then see whether that is uh, correct or not okay you also have the option of immersive reader which is very nice you can also look at the view in the phone how it will look on the phone okay so let's click on the immersive video so what does it do okay so it will actually ah interesting okay so immersive reader allows uh, the, the the question to be read for the students so i think it will be useful uh, if, for example, the students may have uh, some uh, difficulty uh, uh, reading or I don't know. Um, so uh, it can be uh, useful for uh, anybody who wants to uh, answer the quiz. Uh, and of course, since it's uh, given to me, then uh, given to, yeah, uh, created by me and uh, it is a demo to me, then it will ask me, give me the name. So if the students uh, open the quiz and watch it in their own uh, devices then it will say hi whatever their name is okay so then uh, you can go back so after you're uh, happy with this so what you do uh, then you can click on share then you can copy okay so let's go back oh okay so remember we are creating a quiz in our teams so um, click on your teams and so let's share this screen again. Okay, so uh, in the uh, assignment, so let's create, oops, where did my screen go? Okay, quiz. Okay, so now I have this quiz for tutorial tool that I've already uh, created. Let's click on next. So now this quiz uh, is available for my students. So um, creating a quiz uh, is um, uh, quite easy, isn't it? So what you can do now, uh, just click on the sign. And there you have it. The quiz is already created for uh, the students. And once you've created the students, uh, the, the, the uh, quiz, uh, and when you assign it, automatically the, uh, it will appear in the uh, general post for uh, the students. So that is how uh, you create uh, assignments uh, using uh, the teams. Uh, and also then uh, uh, it will help you to probably um, create a, a different uh, engagement with your students uh, uh, by using uh, Teams for uh, assignments and also grading. So uh, once the uh, grading, uh, and of course uh, this uh, assignment is not finished yet, so uh, I can't really put in uh, the, the grading, uh, but after you actually uh, finish uh, the assignment uh, that we uh, asked, so for example that one, so once the assignment is finished, then you can actually move to the grade and grade, uh, uh, mark, being, uh, mark the assignment using rubrics. And I would imagine that uh, marking using rubrics is similar to what you would normally have with uh, the uh, rubrics that we have in Spectrum. That means you just choose which part of the uh, uh, 
uh, rubrics matches with uh, the students' answers, and then um, uh, they will given marks automatically. So uh, I think uh, most of us uh, are quite familiar with uh, marking with rubrics uh, when using Spectre. Okay, I think um, uh, that is uh, all uh, for uh, today's uh, session. So I'm going to stop sharing now. So that is all for uh, today's session um, where we uh, create uh, a few things. Uh, so we explored uh, assignments and creating assignments also uh, giving feedback to uh, the students. We've also looked at uh, engaging the students uh, using Microsoft Sway. So remember, uh, just uh, play around with the Sway uh, settings. Uh, you can also uh, look at the uh, the settings for the sway you can actually share the settings and allow the, the so share your sway and allow people to edit your sway which is um, uh, quite uh, powerful where you can work on a presentation together with your uh, colleagues um, and then uh, of course you uh, also look at uh, creating the uh, teams meeting for online classes so how do we engage your students using uh, scheduled session or in the impromptu session and also you have uh, the different technologies available in uh, our teams things like recording uh, and using stream to then um, give or uh, let the students view the recording and then uh, the race hand feature which is newly uh, uh, available since last week and then of course the background effect that you can change and then um, live captions uh, whiteboard, so, uh, feel free to explore uh, the use of uh, whiteboard uh, to uh, uh, help the experience of actually uh, writing and annotating inside your uh, your your presentation with your students. Okay, and then uh, the first thing that we did uh, to uh, today was actually um, looking at uh, the teams uh, spaces how to create uh, teams uh, in your uh, office 365 account uh, and also how to create the class teams okay so uh, any questions before we uh, end uh, this session so uh, you don't have to type so, so this, this is an open uh, session so just uh, unmute your mic and then uh, ask away so that then either i can if i can't if I can answer it, I will answer it. If uh, the question is might be too technical, uh, we have people from uh, Microsoft who can actually help with uh, the, the questions. So anyone? Any questions that you might have? Dr. Zahir, may I hear from Fadalisa? Uh, you have one question from your participants uh, asking on the chat. Mm -hmm. Maybe I think he doesn't, he doesn't have a, a mic. Okay. Okay, how much do I do not have much drawing function when I look at my board? Okay, so uh, in whiteboard, uh, you have two versions. One is the, um, the Teams, what, the whiteboard in Teams, and also the whiteboard you can download uh from the microsoft store so uh if you want more function i would suggest that you download the uh whiteboard from uh, the microsoft store and you use that uh, when you um, have an engagement with your students okay thank you for the question any more question or uh, oh yeah uh, we have a, a user feedback uh, form isn't it that you want to, to share so uh, if uh, before people leave uh, can may one please share the, the feedback uh, um yes so uh everyone i have shared the feedback form on the chat so just click on the link and fill up uh, you can fill up using a mobile or your uh, pc or notebook 
Um, one thing is that uh, we will capture the attendance based on the feedback form. So uh, everyone who attend the session for today, uh, please make sure you fill up the feedback form. And for this, uh, for all the participants who attended for today's sessions, it's called a Teachers Enablement Week. We will prepare a batch specific, uh, specifically uh, for, for all the teachers and, and the members that actually participate in today's sessions as a milestone for achievement uh, to unlock the milestone for Teachers Enablement for this Team Coach Program. <coughs> Thank you. So, uh, any more uh, questions from uh, the uh, participants? And remember to uh, fill in the feedback before you leave, if you need to leave. Mm. Uh, I have something to share. Okay. If uh, we're waiting for them to have some questions. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give a link here. It's a video. Uh, from a professor in New Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, how he used uh, Teams, uh, AI bots in Teams to automate all the assignments and then turn it into PDF uh, and then use, use bots so that all questions, let's say, uh, many students have a lot of questions, right? You want to get in touch, you want to get all the questions answered, but you don't have much time. So what, what the student do, they go to these boards and, uh, and answer some questions. And these boards will have this AI. If there are similar questions, it will appear. And if there's a no question, no similar question, it will go straight to the lecturer and the lecturer can, can use that, can answer that question. So throughout the years, like two or three years, so the data, the AI will know Okay, and will know and know the, the you know the behavior uh, on how the students uh, ask the questions, which answer which questions that frequently asked. So I will share you this uh, link in the chat. You can check. Uh, you can see how this doctor, this professor, use uh, Microsoft Teams. I think he's the most advanced uh, person that I've seen uh, using uh, these Teams for for education. Okay. Thank you. So that if you like to use, uh, maybe learn about a bit of uh, coding, they, he also shares some, some things to do that. So you just can, uh, maybe can follow the step, but I haven't tried that since okay. Microsoft is open source. Mm. All right, thanks. Okay. Okay, so uh, if there is uh, no more uh, question, so I think we can uh, end uh, the session. Uh, oh, so we have uh, a question, uh, uh, Dr. Sam. Yeah, is there a way to take attendance as, apart from feedback form or uh, getting them to participate so that I mean it can be more automated? Hmm. Ah, okay, so uh, attendance, automated attendance other than the feedback form. Uh, so, um, okay. So there's a, there will be a new, new features coming soon. It should be this end of May or June, May perhaps in US. Uh, we'll, uh, teams will have the attendance, where they will generate attendance for all the students. So there's a list of features coming in. Uh, I will give you the link in the chat as well to see all the new uh, features coming. So a lot of uh, Microsoft knows there's a lot of uh, you know, requests for this feature to to have for the especially for the attendance, so this one will, we will get that soon. Yeah, but okay, from the you. from the roadmap, it show that once the the feature is on, but uh, by default it will be off for all the, for all the organization. So probably need to use PowerShell to turn it on. So if let's say the thing already roll out, then probably we can get a front rows to actually turn it on. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm I'm using the QR code from Spectrum at the moment to get around that. Okay. But it's a, but it's a bit tedious, lah. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that, uh, uh, Doctor Sam. Uh, okay, so any more uh, final question? So if there's no more uh, question, uh, I think we can uh, end the session. So thank you for. Uh, 
uh, being with uh, us uh, for uh, since two o'clock. Uh, thank you for uh, engaging with the, uh, the the session, uh, asking questions, and so uh, we would like to thank um, the the team from uh, Adelis uh, for helping us uh, with this. Uh, of course, we will make this uh, recording um, available in the. Uh, teams um, uh, for uh, educators. Uh, before you go, uh, I would like to uh, share uh, the uh, link to the teams that we have created. So uh, I hope you can all join this uh, teams uh, page. Uh, so this is uh, the Office 365 uh, Learning Community. So uh, let me show you. So if you can go in into your uh, office space is five and enter the team code so this is the team code so like, let me make it full screen so this is the team code um, and enter in the join uh, and create a team with, with the code uh, enter this number so three so three to six and a three x probably you want to uh, just snap a picture or uh, write it down somewhere so if you could um, then go to uh, Office uh, 365, click on click join or create a team and just click join team with the code and enter that code, then you'll be able to uh, become a member of this Office 365 uh, uh, learning community. Okay, so uh, and that uh, it will make it easier for us to actually uh, then have uh, to continue this uh, conversation uh, with uh, anything that you might uh, want to ask. So thank you very much uh, for uh, being with us. Uh, and people from uh, at the Microsoft and also from uh, Badalist, do you have any uh, final things to say? Okay. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, sorry, unfortunately, today's Microsoft, I mean, uh, their representative is not able to be here. Uh, but the whole session has been recorded, so we will pass the recording to Microsoft as well. Um, just a reminder before we, uh, everyone leave, uh, remember to fill up the attendance as we're seeing here, it's about only 10 that submitted the respondent. Okay, so uh, there are people asking next session is Friday. Uh, Dr. Zahir, are, are, are we getting some uh, others to join in for Friday session? Uh, I'm oh. not sure, probably not because uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we will uh, discuss this uh, later. Mm. Oh, okay, so this Friday I will meeting Dr. Zahil uh, uh, for the regular weekly meetings uh, at the same time, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, for the recording, I wish we will share to you uh, under the teams that we have with Dr. Zahil and from there Dr. Zahil you can actually share to your community. Uh, everyone you can join the teams uh, created by Dr. Zahil under the UM Office 365 and Learning Community. So from here, you guys can actually uh, share and learn together. So we have put the team code in the chat as well. So if you guys meet, uh, miss the team code just now, you can actually refer to the chat. So doc, thank you, doc, thank you, Dr. Zahir, for your time today uh, for three hours spent yeah, with uh, all right. the members. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. All right, thank you. So uh, thank you all. So um, uh, uh, we will end here. So uh, we will uh, inform you if there is uh, there are any uh, training session that we're going to have. Uh, and of course, you can always um, request for uh, any more uh, in-depth training uh, on uh, and other features uh, of uh, e-learning that you might uh, want. So uh, thank you um, to all. Um, uh, have a good day. Salamat berbuka puasa for those who are fasting. And if I don't see uh, uh, any of you guys um, before Raya, so selamat hari Raya as well. So thank you very much. So bye bye. Yes. Uh, also a reminder, but perhaps all the uh, lecturers here can take note on the next upcoming events. Uh, it's the student adoption programs. For that, we will need your help to actually uh, help us to promote the workshop to your students and invite them together to join us on this adoption program. So for further details and the confirmation on the date and time, we will actually let Dr. Zahil, uh, co we confer with Dr. Zahil first and we will actually uh, inform Dr. Zahil. Uh, perhaps he will inform all of you after the details is confirmed. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.